welcome to the lecture on case hardening methods. So, so far we have talked about uh, different types of heat treatment and there we have uh, discussed uh, you know how to harden there are what are the different methods of hardening, but they were the bulk uh, you know hardening methods we were talking about the hardening throughout uh, the material. So, they are known as bulk hardening uh, heat treatment uh, processes. Whereas, uh, many a times uh, we require that the heat treatment should be done in such a manner that uh, the surface should be wear resistant or hard and uh, the core should be still soft because uh, uh, the material is uh, expected to be under the impact loading and the core should be sufficiently uh, ductile or tough to take those uh, you know uh, impact type of loads. Uh, typical examples are uh, the uh, gears like uh, in the case of gear you require the uh, surface to be uh, extremely hard and wear resistant uh, because the uh, gear uh, teeth is uh, uh, meeting with each other and, and then they are uh, you know rubbing against each other also and in that case uh, you know the abrasion resistance has to be quite high. Whereas, uh, you know the gear is also subjected to the impact loads and in that case it has to uh, you know sustain those impact loads. So, for that the core uh, part of the gear needs to be tough. So, we so in one sense so what we feel that uh, we need both hardness and toughness although uh, both is very contrary, but we need hardness in the uh, outer region and we need uh, toughness in the inner region. It means we are trying to uh, basically limit the depth of hardness which we are uh, going to achieve uh, uh, using the hardening processes. So, uh, for, so for that uh, you know normally uh, what we uh, see is that uh, in those cases. So, we have to have uh, the core to remain soft and tough and make the surface hard. Now, we have two categories of uh, you know if you talk about the steels. So, when you have a steel with uh, more than 0.35 percent carbon. So, the surface can be hardened by heat treatment as you know that uh, you know we know that uh, the um, uh, as the uh, carbon percentage is uh, becoming more and more uh, still is becoming more hardenable. So, carbon percentage becoming more uh, by quenching you can have the formation of uh, uh, martensite. So, uh, for these cases where the carbon uh, percentage is more than 0.35 percent your surface can be uh, hardened you know uh, by the suitable uh, heat treatment uh, uh, processes because uh, uh, you know uh, hardness of martensite will be a function of the uh, carbon content that we have already you know understood. Now, there will be another category uh, of uh, material or especially steel uh, that is low carbon content and we know that uh, these low carbon content materials they have they are having less hardenability. So, there is uh, less chance of having formation of martensite in usual circumstances. Uh, because uh, the stability of martensite uh, you know is more at uh, with higher amount of carbon. So, in those cases your uh, surface chemistry is to be changed by adding carbon or nitrogen. So, what we do, do in, in those cases we try to you know induce we try to diffuse uh, basically the carbon and nitrogen into the surface itself because that is the only way by which you can make the surface hard. Because if it is a low carbon content material it will be anyway tough uh, you know although throughout, but then the surface can be made hard by inducing uh, the elements like uh, carbon or nitrogen on this surface. So, uh, so we will talking about the uh, two types of uh, you know treatments which are uh, uh, you know given uh, for the two categories of uh, materials. And for that you have different type of uh, case hardening methods are uh, basically advised. And uh, if you go talk about the uh, first category then in that case uh, we talk about the you know methods like induction hardening, flame hardening. So, that uh, basically 
uh, will be uh, dealt with uh, for the materials when you have uh, 0.3 uh, carbon more than 0.35 uh, percent you know. And uh, uh, if you have uh, you know uh, the or, or even the laser hardening and if you have the second uh, you know uh, type of uh, material second category of uh, uh, material in those cases we try to adopt uh, methods like carburizing, cyaniding you know nitriding, carbon nitriding these are the methods which are used for. Uh, so, in the, that case basically you have to um, uh, put them uh, in such a manner that the, uh, the surface at the surface basically they react with uh, these carbon or nitrogen uh, and then they form uh, you know, the, the uh, hard you know uh, surfaces uh, you know the uh, surface will be will have the martensitic structure. So, we will talk one by one about uh, you know uh, these methods. So, if you uh, talk about uh, the method for the first category where the carbon is more than uh, 0.35 percent. So, first is your induction hardening So, uh, in this induction hardening process uh, you know the high uh, frequency uh, you know alternating current. So, that will be passed through uh, the induction coils. So, high frequency AC current. So, that will be uh, passed through induction coil. So, that will be enclosing that steel component which is to be uh, heat treated. So, basically uh, the induced EMF that will be generating the heat you know and uh, uh, this uh, you know uh, so the, that uh, heat will be heating that uh, sample and uh, uh, you know the depth up to which uh, the so, so the depth up to which uh, this uh, heat will be penetrating. So, depth up to which heat penetrates and raises temperature that is basically uh, inversely proportional to the uh, square root of uh, AC frequencies. So, uh, so that will be uh, you know uh, the depth uh, up to which the heat penetrates and uh, raises uh, you know the temperature above transformation temperature. So, that is uh, inversely proportional to square root of AC frequency. So, basically you can control by controlling the frequency you can control the depth up to which uh, this uh, temperature is raising uh, above uh, AC 3 temperature or so. And uh, then after that uh, you know uh, once you do that, so only in few seconds this hardening will be uh, uh, taking place and after that you are sprinkling the water jets. So, you know that up to what depth this temperature has increased and if you sprinkle the water jet then uh, most uh, you are likely to have the martensitic structure. So, basically uh, you know uh, water jets are activated sprinkled to, to quench surface. So, once the water jets are uh, you know activated then that will basically you know, form the martensite uh, on the uh, surface immediately and uh, the surface will be quite hard and wear resistant. So, since it uses the uh, you know induction principle for heating the material and then further you are quenching it uh, uh, by sprinkling the water or by uh, using the water. So, we are uh, using this uh, uh, we are calling it as induction hardening process normally uh, we use it for the articles of uniform cross section because you have to have 
these you know uh, you have to use these induction coils and all that. So, you must have uh, uh, some uh, material of uh, uniform cross section. So, so that is uh, normally in the case of induction hardening. Now, another uh, process which is uh, used uh, uh, for uh, the material of first category that will be uh, your flame hardening. So, if you go to the uh, flame hardening process, now as the name indicates, now in this case uh, you use the flame basically uh, to increase the temperature in the in certain zone. So, uh, like uh, for a larger uh, you know uh, uh, um, cast specimen or uh, many a times uh, you do not have the material of uniform cross section you have complex uh, geometry where you can you know, not use these induction hardening uh, methods. In those cases uh, we use this flame hardening because flame with flame uh, with the oxy flame you can uh, always uh, use. Uh, uh, you can heat at any point. So, you can use the flame uh, you ignite uh, uh, using uh, you know torch and then you can uh, you know subject these flames to uh, respective places. So, that the temperature is increased. So, normally we use the oxyacetylene torch type of uh, thing you know to uh, do it and then once the temperature is increased uh, you know uh, to the required uh, value then we are further quenching. So, normally it is suitable for very large objects or maybe many a times for the you know somewhat complex uh, you know type of uh, uh, you know uh, cross sections where uh, normally we uh, it is very difficult to use the induction hardening uh, you know method. So, we go with uh, these uh, you know uh, flame hardening uh, methods. The third method which is uh, used is uh, the laser hardening. And as the name indicates here too, uh, we do the heating with the help of laser. So, as you know that uh, the uh, you know laser, so with that uh, you can have, so that is a very uh, good heat source because uh, uh, you know with uh, uh, you they will be uh, there will be beams of very high intensity. And uh, you know uh, we are uh, basically using the uh, lens to reduce the intensity of those beams and uh, also we can have the defocused spot. So, we can have the defocused spot of uh, certain sizes ranges because uh, it will be focused to a very narrow region then there go it can go and it can melt also. But if you are uh, you know having in a certain uh, you know ranges of size may be varying from uh, uh, from uh, 1 to or 0.5 to let us say 25 mm size in that area it can be defocused. So, that way it will increase the temperature uh, it will try to see that it does not melt. So, uh, you will have to adopt uh, you know the proper controlling measures so that it does not uh, melt. Now, uh, what it does is that in this case uh, you uh, increase the temperature and then you leave. So, in this case uh, you do not need to go for quenching you know uh, because uh, uh, it is uh, because of the mass of the unheated because they you are going into a very small region. So, <coughs> when you stop basically the, uh, the the focusing the beam uh, or you know or, or, or projecting the beam. Then since the mass of the material uh, all around is quite high. So, anyway the heat transfer rate will be quite high uh, from that localized region. So, uh, without the uh, in fact uh, without the uh, use of uh, quenching setup you get uh, the hardening process you know. Uh, uh, done in this case uh, uh, in the case of laser hardening. The, the disadvantage uh, with uh, the case of laser hardening is uh, that the hardening is shallower as compared to the um, either you can take the example of induction hardening or the uh, you know uh, the flame hardening. So, uh, with respect to these two it is uh, somewhat uh, uh, shallower. Now, we will come to the next uh, you know uh, category of uh, uh, the process of uh, case hardening that is uh, carburizing uh, processes. So, 
uh, that these uh, are for uh, the materials uh, especially steels when your uh, uh, carbon uh, content is less maybe 0 0.15 to 0 0.3 percent or so. So, in those cases uh, the hardenability is quite less and uh, uh, for the steels maybe uh, so typically we normally uh, go for uh, you know for, for low carbon steels. So, normally carbon is uh, less than 0.25 you know percent and uh, mm, you know. So, we are basically enriching this in this case the mm, surface with uh, carbon percentages of uh, maybe. Uh, so, enriching surface with uh, you know carbon percentage of uh, of the order of uh, 0.8 to 1 percent. So, so that is known as carburizing process because in this case we try to you know uh, uh, give the carbon at the surface diffuse carbon into the surface and uh, so that uh, you know, once the carbon goes then it will uh, make the surface uh, hardenable and you will have the formation of martensite once you uh, or, or basically uh, by going the carbon into it you will have uh, the hardness achieved. Now, uh, how how to uh, put this carbon for that we use uh, some sources so that the uh, we can have so so we have to have the source of carbon and this source of carbon may be uh, either in the form of solid or liquid or gas so uh, so we can have the uh, solid that uh, that is uh, uh, known as the pack carburizing so because uh, you have the powder of uh, charcoal and mixed with so that we will discuss then we have also liquid uh, maybe you may have liquid uh, you know medium or you may have the gaseous medium also to have uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, formation of uh, uh, this uh, heat treatment process. So, normally what we do is in this case we are heating uh, to temperature above the austenitizing temperature we are normally going to the, uh, the temperature range of 920 to 950 degrees centigrade. And, uh, 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 then uh, we are uh, uh, doing this uh, treatment because if you do you know at lower temperature then uh, uh, the solubility of uh, carbon uh, in ferrite is less uh, you know when uh, there is ferrite and in that case the cementite you know uh, a large amount of cementite will be uh, formed and massive cementite particles uh, formation uh, will further uh, pose difficulty in uh, heat treating the material. So, so, normally we go to a temperature which is higher than the 920 uh, temperature or so we, we, we will go to the uh, range of 920 to 950 degree centigrade. So, basically we are going into the austenitizing uh, range. So, going into austenitizing range. So, uh, we are always doing the carburizing uh, when we are in the austenitic state. Now, uh, so talking about the uh, variety of uh, the uh, carburizing method one is the pack carburizing. Now, in this uh, pack carburizing as we discussed you have uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, materials which are packed in a box and uh, you know so you have a powdery mixture you have 85 percent charcoal uh, and we have uh, 15 percent of uh, energizer so uh, you know so energizer will be uh, something like uh, uh, you know have BaCO3 now uh, this box basically is sealed uh, you know uh, with fire clay and load into the furnace. So, sealed with fire clay and loaded into furnace. So, that will be loaded into the furnace which will be uh, you know uh, kept at uh, 930 degree centigrade. So, uh, you know see so what happens the residual air which is there inside the box that will be uh, combining uh, that will be forming uh, first uh, you know the that will be reacting uh, you know and, and the ultimate aim is to have the you know uh, 
gaseous product that is carbon monoxide, this carbon monoxide will uh, talk with uh, will be reacting with carbon and it will be forming the uh, so iron will be having uh, you know iron will be enriched with the carbon. So, the reaction uh, follows uh, you know in the following manner. So, basically the reaction will proceed like uh, you will have BaCO3 basically uh, converted to BaO plus CO2 and then this CO2 uh, will be further reacting with the uh, carbon because uh, you have limiting uh, amount of oxygen. So, you will have the formation of carbon monoxide. Now, this uh, carbon monoxide from here the carbon will enter into the steel. So, the carbon monoxide will react with uh, iron. So, it will be having uh, you know iron with carbon and also you will have uh, the uh, CO2. So, you will have uh, uh, so, this way uh, the typically the reaction uh, takes place in the case of uh, pack carburizing where you have charcoal which is there reacting with the CO2 which is the product of this reaction and then uh, you will have the iron that is uh, uh, picking up this uh, carbon and uh, making it uh, you know uh, harder. So, the typical carburizing time will be normally from 6 to 8 hours and uh, the case depth which is hardened. So, that is uh, about 1 to 2 mm. So, uh, in this case you will have case depth of 1 to 2 mm and hardening time will be uh, so the carburizing time will be about 6 to uh, 8 hours. Now, what we do is many a times if you are putting inside the pack then you need you may also need to see that certain part is not uh, you know. Uh, uh, ha is not required I mean in those parts we do not require hardening. So, they are basically sometimes uh, we use either the electroplating of copper plating with copper. Uh, so, that can be done uh, you know uh, up to up to certain thickness or uh, you know so that way uh, you can have uh, uh, avoidance of the carbon pickup into that zone or we may have also the uh, refractory you know. Uh, uh, paste that is fire clay mixed with asbestos that is also you know uh, kept on that surface. So, that there is uh, you know, no, no hardening in that uh, region taking place. Now, uh, uh, this uh, we are going to the next uh, kind of carburizing that is uh, use of uh, the gas and we can go uh, for the for the gas carburizing we use uh, some gases like methane. So, in this case uh, uh, we use 5 to 15 percent of methane or propane and uh, in neutral gas as carrier. So, carrier will be some neutral gas. So, what will happen this uh, methane will decompose and methane will be decomposed and then uh, after that it will react with uh, uh, so, iron. So, you are getting iron and carbon. So, that way uh, your uh, carbon uh, you know will uh, so uh, this iron will be having uh, be, be picking this uh, carbon and it will be giving you the um, uh, better hardness in such cases. Then uh, uh, the you have also the liquid carburizing method. Now, it is uh, you know uh, it is uh, somewhat like the cyanidic process which we will discuss later. So, in the case of uh, liquid carburizing uh, you know processes, uh, you have a bath uh, which is uh, uh, composition of uh, 8 percent uh, you know NaCn and then you have 82 percent BaCl2 and uh, 10 percent NaCl. So, you have a uh, bath composition is there. And uh, then in that uh, bath you are keeping uh, you know uh, the material. So, your reaction will take place. So, BaCl2 will uh, react with uh, NaCn that will be giving you barium cyanide and uh, then you will have uh, uh, NaCl and this uh, um, BaCn2 this will be reacting with iron. So, you will have pick up of iron with carbon and then barium Cl2. So, so, so in this case you are getting this uh, pickup of uh, you know uh, the carbon 
uh, by the iron and you have hardening uh, taking place. And in this case the advantage is that you have a uh, rapid heat transfer because liquid will have uh, uh, you know this is a better medium to uh, conduct the heat uh, transfer to the uh, to the specimen. So, you will have uh, the temperature control is also more in the case of liquid uh, bath and also you have uh, the heat transfer rate at a quite uh, high value. So, this is the uh, uh, gas carburizing method. Apart from that uh, you know, but uh, one more thing is uh, what is required in the case of carburizing is that uh, after carburizing we go for some uh, heat treatment methods. So, what we do is normally when we do the uh, you know uh, carburizing then uh, we do the heat treatment in two stages. First is that uh, we are going into the uh, temperature above the A3 line and then um, cooling below and then um, uh, we are going to uh, you know we are further heating to just above A3 and then uh, you know further going to the room temperature. In the second stage we are uh, going to just above A1 and then we are further uh, cooling. So, this is just to have uh, you know the fine structure uh, of the material we go for these post carburizing uh, heat treatment uh, you know processes. Now, uh, the we will talk about the uh, different uh, other uh, you know um, heat treatment process case carb uh, case hardening method one is uh, you know cyaniding. So, in the case of cyaniding you have uh, so, we do the uh, you know uh, heat treatment in the liquid uh, you know bath of NaCN. So, you use liquid bath of NaCN. So, the concentration will be varying from 30 to uh, 90 percent. So, what happens in this case? both carbon and nitrogen they diffuse into uh, the surface. So, they will, they will enter into the steel and uh, then you will be uh, this, that will be followed by uh, certain uh, reaction like uh, you have uh, uh, NaCN. So, that will be reacted with oxygen and give you NaCNO and this uh, NaCNO that uh, will be uh, you know uh, forming NaCN plus Na2CO3 plus carbon plus 2 nitrogen. Now, this carbon as well as the nitrogen these are in free form. So, they will be you know uh, reacting they will be going into um, you know. So, um, so they will be uh, combined with carbon and they will be giving the hard surface you know uh, uh, by so by the pickup of this carbon and uh, um, nitrogen. Now, in this case the uh, temperature range is somewhat lower then that of carburizing. So, temperature uh, range will be somewhat uh, close to 800 to 870 degree centigrade. And uh, you know in this case the uh, time of cyaniding is normally smaller it is 0 0.5 to 3 hours and uh, for basically the uh, having the skin depth of or case depth of 0 0.25 mm or, or less you require lesser time. So, that is how the uh, cyaniding process is uh, uh, defined. Now, there is another uh, you know uh, process that is a carbonitriding process. So, this is also known as uh, dry cyaniding or uh, uh, gas cyaniding process uh, this uh, carbonitriding process. Now, in this case uh, you know it is basically the uh, gas carburizing process and uh, you have the uh, addition of anhydrous ammonia and uh, you this uh, uh, this ammonia that will decompose and it will give you uh, nitrogen and which will be entering uh, the in the steel along with carbon. So, basically you, you use uh, anhydrous uh, ammonia. So, uh, you know so typical gas mixture which is used is normally 15 percent you know NS3. So, your gas mixture will be 15 percent NS3 then you have CH4 that is um, you know 5 percent of uh, CH4 and uh, you know 80 percent of will be your natural gas neutral carrier gas. So, that we have already you know seen uh, while we talk about the uh, liquid carburizing you know 
when we are talking about the, uh, uh, the liquid carburizing uh, uh, method that time we discussed. So, that is uh, normally used temperature used will be about 750 to 900 degree centigrade and uh, you know uh, if you increase that temperature then large amount of uh, you know carbon will be entering into the steel. So, that is your uh, nitrogen. Now, I mean that is uh, carbonitriding. Now, uh, the um, we will also discuss about the another important uh, you know uh, case hardening process that is uh, nitriding. Now, uh, you know in contrast to the you know other uh, processes which we discussed this nitriding is carried out in the ferrite region. So, carried out ferrite region. So, basically uh, you will have uh, no phase change occurring uh, because it is uh, uh, you know carried out in the case of uh, in the ferrite region. And uh, you know with this uh, the part. So in this case, uh, you use the uh, pure ammonia. Now, uh, so they should have the uh, core. Prop, uh, you, they should have. Uh, uh, they should possess the required core properties uh, before uh, you know uh, nitriding. And uh, uh, if necessary, you have to have the prior heat treatment uh, given to develop these properties. Now, in this case what we do is we use we take pure ammonia which will be decomposing. So, your ammonia uh, which we take it will be decomposing to uh, you know 2 n plus uh, 3 H 2. So, the solubility of nitrogen basically you know in ferrite is very very small. So, what happens that uh, you know the iron will uh, react and it will form the you know hard nitrides basically. Uh, you know the concept of having carbon or nitrogen normally is that uh, you will have the formation of carbides or nitrides. So, in this case this nitrogen will form the nitride and basically typically the Fe 3 n will be formed and uh, you know uh, the typical nitriding steel that will be uh, containing alloying elements like uh, you will have uh, 1 percent of aluminum and 1.5 percent chromium and uh, 0.2 percent uh, you know molybdenum. So, uh, in that case you are, uh, so these aluminum, copper and molybdenum they form um, very hard uh, you know and wear resistant uh, you know nitrides. So, um, so these alloying elements are uh, typically required so that you can do the nitriding uh, you know treatment and you get the uh, good surface hardness for these uh, materials. Now, in the case of nitriding the temperature will be of the order of about 500 to 590 degree C and time will be about 2 hour for a case depth of uh, uh, you know uh, something like uh, 0 0.02 mm. So, this way you get uh, quite 1000 uh, to 2000 time value of uh, VPN hardness you are uh, uh, getting in such cases or uh, close to maybe uh, uh, more than 60 Iraq will see you are getting uh, for these uh, you know uh, in, in the case of nitriding. So, we discussed about all these uh, different types of uh, uh, surface hardening processes uh, which basically affect uh, you know the, the surface characteristics of the steels and that can be applied to other you know alloying uh, you know materials also alloys also. Uh, and uh, this uh, mean we can uh, you can further you are advised to you know, go through the other literature uh, on the different uh, you know heat treatment methods because uh, we must have the concept that how the hardening is taking place how it affects the surface properties and what will be its effect on the mechanical properties. So, so this is about the uh, different type of case hardening methods. Thank you very much.